Hello everyone. I've been meaning to do a video on this for a while now. Um, I didn't quite have the time or the thing set up to do it right, to do it justice. So today I'll be mostly um, displaying Carl Willis's tubes. He uh, sells some tubes online that he makes. They're custom gas discharge tubes, electrodeless. So they require either a high frequency AC power supply like he builds, or a solid state Tesla coil like I build to power. The nice thing about the uh, high frequency uh, power supply he builds is that it actually holds the tubes up so you can use them as a display device and they're running relatively low power with no need for advanced grounding or anything like that um, but they have to be in the base to be active. The nice thing about using the solid state test coil to power them is that there is wireless operation. Um, you can use them in your hands disconnected from any device as long as you're within the E-field range of the Tesla coil powering them. Now what we have on screen right now is a medium-sized desktop Tesla coil. Um, it is rated for about 700 watts. I have it currently wired up with a high impedance primary which is just below the screen here. You see the black winding. Um, that lowers the input power to around 400 watts or so. I also have this on my experimental 4046 PLL driver modulator. Um, the main driver board is the USS TCC driver that I designed and produced and sell. Um, it is powering a half bridge of standard FDL 150F MOSFETs, but your generic high power MOSFETs will do just as well too. Operating frequency is about 341 kilohertz. Um, as I said, the output power is about 400 watts. That is um, running CW with no modulation with the FM modulation, which via slope detection turns into AM modulation, you can hear, we get around 220 watts average power. It's 400 watts peak. So, let me power it on, grab the tubes, and give you a show. Now, it doesn't look like much in the bright studio lighting I have here, but let me turn off the lamps for a second for you to see. And I apologize for the poor video quality when doing so. I will turn the lights back on. Approximately three inches of brush discharge at the top. Now, first up, we have a Krypton iodine tube here from Carl Willis. It is a 500 milliliter flask, round bottom, pretty sealed off. One of my favorites. Let's bring it into the Tesla coil. You can see it's completely wireless. And if I edge in, this is, mind you, at full power, I can get a diffuse glow. When I turn off the lamp in a second, you'll see it much better. Next up is the iodine neon tube that Carl made. This is one of my favorites. It's a rather large tube here. Nice thick wall glass. I like the solid construction he used here. I have other tubes made by other makers, and they're all thin wall glass. And while punch through, which is where the dielectric breakdown of glass occurs, which destroys it, um, can occur for any of these tubes with such high voltages as the solid state Tesla coil puts out. It is less likely in such thick wall glass. You still have to be very careful.
as I said, this is running my advanced PLO audio modulator, but you don't hear any audio right now. Well, let me turn on the audio. First, to turn off the power. Always turn off the power before working near your board, especially when it's on a breadboard like mine is, it's still in the development phase. Start the iPod. Reapply power. Now that audio is coming from the ARC. There's no speaker. As I draw more power away from the ARC, the audio gets quieter. Thank you for watching.